Can you get out of my shot? Can I film? Or are you gonna stay right here the whole time? Totally up to you, but like, no, I have to film. No, I have to film a wrap up. I don't think. Okay. All right. I'm. I'm not. I'm, I have to film right now. I do before my lunch is over. It's really important. No, no, like it's really important. I don't know why you sit like this, but it's horrifying. Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mouse Sometimes Andy, and I talk about books and book-related things. And today, I am going to be giving you all my wrap-up. Um, the reason that I am consistently in this setup is that it is the best way of getting lighting. Um, at the moment because my windows are right there and otherwise I have to use my ring light and it is actually just too hot for me to do that entire setup and also have my fan fans off. It's just too hot in the state of Texas right now for me to give that a go so I will not be doing that. Also as always disclaimer that if you hear any kind of beeping sounds in the background etc I live with seven other animals and it's any of those things causing that sound. Great, and I have also tried to edit the sounds out and it's not possible, so. <laughs> this is gonna be my wrap up for July. It is July 30th. I am actually filming it the day before the month ends. I'm quite proud of myself for that one. Um, didn't read as much as usual uh, this month or like have clearly slowed it down, way down. I'm actually only in the middle of one book right now. So this is, is pretty accurate numbers uh i think actually down to the the only thing that is maybe not the most accurate at this point is the um rating because that last book i have not rated yet as i have not finished it i have about two hours left in the audiobook so let's talk about stats first and then we'll talk about best books and then the worst books plural i will be talking about more than one mostly i'll get to that you'll you'll see why in a minute so for stats this month, I read 66 books. I uh, read 25,262 pages. I listened to 28 days worth of audio. That would be 692 hours and some change. My average rating was a 3.4 and we will, I will get into the details of that in a little bit. All right. Uh, when it comes to types of books, I listened to 59 audiobooks, 6 ebooks were read, and 1 physical book was read. So yeah, definitely just going through audiobooks like crazy right now. That is mostly because of my library checkouts, which I have explained more than once in many, many different videos, but I feel like I need to explain again. I am listening to a lot of audiobooks that I have had um, marked as things I wanted to read and things that were on my um, want to read list on Goodreads. I've been listening to those on um, at the library and so that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> I read 44 fantasy books, 8 LGBTQ plus books as in that is the um, main character fit into one of those categories. Uh, six sci-fi books, six thriller books, two contemporary books, four retellings, one horror, one historical, chalker, I know, and one romance book. I think that that is not completely correct. I feel like I probably mislabeled something because I'm pretty sure I read more than one romance. No, I know I read more than one romance book. Anyway, no, I, I know I did, so. But none of them were mind-blowing, so can't tell you which ones I read because of that. I read 44 young adult books and 19 adult books. I also read three middle grade books. When it comes to authors, because I actually did essentially two childhood rereads in one month, the diversity of them is not great. Uh, I do want to say that the way that I've been tracking my books, I no longer... Last year, I essentially only counted... So say I read Terry Brooks a bunch of times, I didn't count him multiple, multiple times as multiple authors, right? Because he's a white cis dude. This time, because of the way that I'm tracking that data, it's very difficult for me to not mark them as who they are. So when I say I read 60 cisgendered authors, a large chunk of those, you know, at least 12 of them were PC cast alone when I read the House of Night series. And then, you know, I think 
eight or nine or ten or Tamora Pierce rereading the um, Tortal Kingdom series. So I think that that's very important to note because reading an entire series by one author is obviously going to skew some of these numbers. So I read at 60 cisgendered from 66 cisgendered authors. See that? Six times fast. 51 white authors, nine queer authors, nine people of color authors, nine debut authors, um, six non-binary authors, and then five neurodiverse authors. I also feel like tracking the neurodiverse authors is a little bit interesting because you don't, unless they're like vocal about it on the internet, you don't necessarily know. And so I'm only able to track that according to that. So I, uh, yeah, that's that's it. And like I said, we are I'm slowing my reading way down. Next month, I'm going to be working on getting a specific certification. So that just means that I'm not going to have time to listen to audiobooks. Even I have several books uh, in Libby right now that I need to get to reading, and I just have not had time. So the top five books I read this July. Uh, first, we have Gearbreakers by Zoe Hannah Makuda. Uh, this book met all of my expectations, and I had to lay in the floor after I read it. I want to be very clear though that the first 20% of it is kind of confusing and I think would have done better with some world building. And then after that, the book suddenly becomes like this incredibly amazing book. It really fleshed itself out right after the 25, 20% mark. It was very strange. It was like all of a sudden you were reading a completely different book. Things made way more sense and it was much more enjoyable. I don't really know what that means but I rated it five stars mostly for vibes so a lot of the time when I rate something I'm very honest about like okay the pacing was off the world building could have done had a little bit more work this would be a four star read but the vibes were so good that this is a five star read and literally after that 20% mark my book is just tabbed it to hell like I ran out of tabs because of how much I was using them but anything before there's like this huge blank space of no tabs and then tons and tons of tabs in the book uh, because the writing is just so beautiful. So it was a really solid book and I enjoyed it a lot. I liked the romance in it and I also liked that we had a bisexual character and a lesbian and they were, you know, themselves. And that wasn't a whole like ordeal, but it was still mentioned. Sometimes people make it too much of an identity crisis and I can't. The next book is actually a graphic novel, which is Teen Titans Raven by Cami Garcia. I had seen a lot of people reading this book, uh, this book series, and when I saw Beast Boy Loves Raven was coming out, I really, really wanted to read this series. My library had the first one, so I went ahead and got that and read it, and it was incredible. Raven is one of my favorite DC Comics characters. I really like DC Comics in general, and so this was really uh, fun for me to read, and I'm excited to read uh, Teen Titans Beast Boy by the same author and then of course Beast Boy Loves Raven as soon as it's uh, available. But I think that they did a, uh, that Kami Garcia did a really fantastic job of blending some of the canon stories of Raven that we do know to be true and then some newer concepts and modernizing the story of the Teen Titans because I think that we have the tendency to retell these comic stories in like 80 different universes and then it kind of gets lost as to like who the characters are at their core and I think that Cami Garcia did a really good job of keeping Raven who Raven is and some of the core parts of Raven's story that make her who she is while also making it a new thing that's fun and enjoyable and doesn't feel like a new rehashing of the same story if that makes sense. The third uh, best book of the month is going to be The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. I didn't like, have high expectations at all for this book. I wasn't sure how we were going to move past the truly devious crime. I, I just didn't know how this was going to work outside of the school and that situation. So this was very like 80s summer camp slasher film energy. Um, like if you watch the 19... 86 or whatever um, movie on Netflix, the three-part horror film series on Netflix. It was big that summer camp vibe. Um, well, obviously it's not that, it's not, you know, supernatural. That's not what's happening. Um, it was very much that energy and very fun to listen to. I enjoyed it a lot. The only thing that I didn't like is the main character's romance doesn't, the way that she reacts to him, um, the guy, I can't think of his name right now, the way that she reacts to him doesn't 
track to the way that she reacts to everything else in her world and I think that because this character is so anxiety driven and like analytical and, and logical and I really assume neuro, neuro neurodivergent I really like think that she fits into that category I struggle to understand why she reacts romantically to this person um in the way that she does it's like she's a completely different character and it's just very confusing to me I think that maybe the author might have a hard time writing the character in a romantic sense in general but wants to continue to develop that plot line but I think we could let the plot line die you know I think that, that would be fine just a thought for the best arcs the two best arcs that I read this month that is going to be The Rot by Siri Pearson this is a continuation in the um Raven Cycle trilogy not the Raven Cycle the Raven Cycle is uh not the Raven Cycle the Raven Child? Something like that. The Child of Odin was the first book, or Odin's Child was the first book, and it is already out in another language, but it is finally making it to the United States, and I really enjoy this series. This second book took us into a completely different universe, which the way the first book ended it made sense. The whole thing made sense. and. I just really liked seeing these characters in this other universe, seeing how they interacted with one another. Um, Herka was just her very wild self. My only grievance with the Rot is that a lot of the time Herka does not act her age. She acts very childish and I regularly think that she's only 13 or 14 when actually she's like 16, 17. And so her sometimes her reactions to other people are aligned with a 16 or 17 year old and I have to remind myself that that's her age and should be expected because like most of the time I think of her as like a small child when she's not that she's not a small child but that's all that I can think of um and I had this issue in the first book as well was how childish Herka inherently just seems and how it, it makes it very hard to understand some of the actions that she's taking because it it doesn't it just doesn't line up and that disconnect is a little bit jarring sometimes. I will also say the pacing was a little bit off for this one but it's because we had to transition between two different universes throughout the book for most of the book and I think that that hindered the book more than helped it. I think we could have done fine with like one chapter where we figure out how someone gets to the other universe and then like called it a day. I don't think we needed all of the build up to it and it's probably going to be important by the third book but it's not translated in English yet so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, the next arc that we have is The Lighthouse Witches by CJ Cook. This is kind of a sci-fi thriller situation, a bit of a horror almost, and it pulls onto Irish uh, witch hunting scandals um situations and how this girl this family of two three three girls and their mom go to this island to work on this lighthouse for this dude and they all of a sudden two of the girls have completely gone missing the mother like abandons her daughter in the middle of the woods and weird right so that's in the 80s and then in or in the 90s and then in 2021 the one surviving daughter surviving daughter um exists and she gets a phone call that her sister's been found and she's like cool awesome I'm very excited and it's her originally her little sister who went missing around the time that she was eight and when she goes to pick up her sister from the hospital her sister is still eight even though it's been 20 30 years so that's confusing and it's just very um interesting and the red herrings that it gave you I felt like were really well done my only grievance is that at times the pacing was a little bit like but and then some of the other red herrings about like that made you feel like is this a murder mystery or is this a sci-fi what's going on I didn't enjoy all of them and I think that's a given with any kind of thriller sci-fi regular or not I think that there are just some parts like it's very hard to find a five star thriller for me just because I have very high standards when it comes to those because I've been reading thrillers since I was young they are my they used to be one of my favorite genres not so much anymore they used to be for the for <laughs> for the worst book that I read it's actually 12 books and those 12 books are the entire House of Night series by PC cast now then in September I have a video coming out in which I will explain why these books are so bad 
but to give you the short version of it, there are tons of slurs, which I know that in 2010, 2011, and 2012, maybe we weren't all informed that we shouldn't be using the R slur. So I have a little bit, just a little bit, but not a whole lot because like, shh, let's still don't do it. Like, let's just not use that word. Uh, I have a little bit of leeway with it, but the amount that they used it was kind of unacceptable. They had one character whose entire personality was just that he was gay and our main character would not curse and so instead of saying shit, she said poopy the whole time and also used he he as a legitimate expression. And she is 17 and 18 in the entire series and I wanted to hit her in the mouth. There are a lot of other issues with the books, um, but those are the main ones that made them very hard to stomach. I'm pretty good at rereading my childhood rereads with kind of a outside mindset of, yes, these things are not politically correct now and are not okay, but I do also understand where these things came from, that sort of thing. This, these books are not that old, first off. And second off, I think that even if I was reading them as a teenager, because I, I just barely remember reading them to the point where like, while I was rereading it, I was like, did I actually read these books? And then when I went to my dad's office to find uh, one of the Terry Brooks books, I found the fifth book in the series and I was like, okay, clearly I owned it because some of my childhood books are in their library. And uh, that's the only proof I have that I read these books because I'm pretty sure that if I read them at 18, that I would not have been able to handle the the lack of cursing, at the very least, the lack of cursing. Yeah, no, mm -mm. There, there, I could go on about this forever, but I do have a video coming out about it, so just watch that instead of listening to me rant about it here, because you guys know that if I get started, I won't stop. Uh, yeah, so that's my wrap up, very short and sweet. Had to get up there because my video camera did stop recording, but that's because there's like five minutes of silence. Um, I hope that you guys liked this video. If you didn't, let me know in the comments down below how I can make it better for you. Um, are you going to read Gear Breakers? Because you should, but also know that the first 20% is not ideal. It's also quite gory, so I will also say that. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have read any of the books that I'm talking about, or if you're excited about any of the arcs that I've mentioned. Um, also, don't forget to take care of yourselves. Also, also, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. You can follow me on all of the social media things that I use. Um, there are a few different ones so I will be starting to add those to my bio now because I, that's changed a little bit but I hope you guys enjoyed this um take care of yourselves drink your water make smart choices have a great rest of your day and I hope that August is everything that you have wanted it to be okay thanks bye